What's up my support fibro friends? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the abnormalities of the nervous system in relation to fibromyalgia. We're going to keep it top level as we'll have additional videos that go into more specific shortly. My name is Melissa Talwar. I am the executive director of the Support Fibromyalgia Network, and I also work as a board-certified functional medicine health coach in group medical visits. I have additional training in functional nutrition and clinical neuroscience. In our last video, we discussed the complexities of the nervous system and how all these specialized cells, tissues, and organs coordinate and regulate the activities of the body. The nervous system is responsible for receiving, processing, and transmitting information throughout the body to facilitate communication and control various functions. At its core, the nervous system is composed of two main components, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Now, while the exact cause of fibromyalgia is not fully understood, researchers believe that it involves multiple factors, including abnormalities in the nervous system. The involvement of the nervous system in fibromyalgia suggests both central and peripheral nervous system abnormalities contributing to its symptoms. Now, we're going to take a look and highlight some of the potential factors related to the nervous system that may contribute to both development and the symptoms of fibromyalgia. Now, as we take a look at some of these potential factors uh, that's been demonstrated in research already, we need more robust research when it comes to the nervous system and the role it plays in fibromyalgia. So please keep that in mind when you hear discussions online um, and even in person when it comes to the nervous system. As you can tell, these divisions are valuable to each other and they communicate to each other. So if you do have a physical injury, which is one of my areas of interest um, when it comes to fibromyalgia, especially nerve injury, remember it's going to communicate back to the brain and spinal cord. And I have a fascination with this when it comes to people that have experienced head injuries, have been involved in car accidents, have injuries from surgery, because I want to know what the contributing factors are in developing fibromyalgia. So please keep this in mind when you think about this nervous system as a whole, because there's a lot of moving parts and we're going to get into more specifics in other videos as we move along. So one of the largest talked about factors is central sensitization. And this is one of the key features of fibromyalgia. So, and central sensitization refers to an amplified response of the central nervous system to pain signals. It is believed that individuals with fibromyalgia have an abnormal increase in pain processing leading to heightened sensitivity to pain. This can result from changes in the way the brain and spinal cord process pain signals. Abnormalities in pain perception and processing. So the nervous system of individuals with fibromyalgia may have altered pain perception and pain processing. This can involve an increased response to non-painful stimuli, allodynia, and a heightened sensitivity to painful stimuli, hyperalgesia. These abnormalities can result in the widespread pain experienced by individuals with fibromyalgia. Now, we have seen studies using neuroimaging techniques, and they've shown abnormal activity in regions of the brain involved in pain perception, including heightened activity and altered connectivity. So we have pain perception and pain processing abnormalities of the nervous system. Neurotransmitter dysregulation. This topic does come up quite a bit as well. So neurotransmitters are chemicals that transmit signals between nerve cells. Imbalances in certain neurotransmitters, such as serotonin and dopamine, have been observed in individuals with fibromyalgia. Imbalances like this can contribute to effect on the mood, sleep regulation, and even pain modulation. Dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system and something I've been investigating a lot more recently because after my surgery, I seem to be getting a lot more dysregulation in this nervous system. So the autonomic nervous system controls involuntary bodily functions and may also be involved with fibromyalgia. Some individuals with fibromyalgia may experience autonomic dysfunction, which can manifest as abnormalities in heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, and temperature regulation. 
Now, one area, again, that needs to be much more investigated, as I mentioned in the last video, is the enteric nervous system involving with the gut. Sleep disturbances. So we all know about our sleep disturbances with fibromyalgia. Many individuals with fibromyalgia experience sleep disturbances, including difficulties falling asleep, staying asleep, and achieving restorative sleep. Disruptions in sleep patterns can impact the central nervous system, leading to increased pain, sensitivity, fatigue, and cognitive difficulties small fiber neuropathy. Now, small fiber neuropathy is a condition characterized by damage or dysfunction of the small nerves, the small nerve fibers that transmit sensory and autonomic signals in the peripheral nervous system. Although not all individuals with fibromyalgia have small fiber neuropathy, there is evidence to suggest that a subset of fibromyalgia patients may also experience small fiber neuropathy. We're going to have to just do a separate video on small fiber neuropathy and go through the research on this. Now, small fiber neuropathy shares certain symptoms with fibromyalgia, including widespread pain, burning or tingling sensations, and increased sensitivity to touch or temperature. These symptoms are suggested of neuropathic pain. So again, these are highlighted topics for you. We'll have plenty more. Stay fibro nerdy with us, okay, fibro friends? Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.